Okay, good morning from Canada. My name's Joanna, if we've not met before, and this is a weekly student development session. And today we are carrying on with a three-part session that we've been doing on uh, yin yoga and the chakras and it's specifically looking at um, adding the element of aromatherapy and essential oils to a yin yoga practice that's themed around the chakras. So it's quite specific, but it's something that I've um, been working on and with, with my students and they seem to be very receptive to it. So I thought it might be useful to share here. Maybe you would like to incorporate this as a workshop at uh, the studio or spaces that you work out of, or maybe you want to create a, a seven part series where you dive into each chakra each week and create this kind of spa-like experience for your students as they dive into their yin asana and also receive the therapeutic benefits of aromatherapy essential oils. So I have a part one and two that are available on the page. If you haven't already watched them, I recommend you do. They look at the root, sacral, heart, uh, solar plexus and heart chakras. And then today we're going to finish the series with the throat, third eye and crown of the head. These three I'll be able to get through in one session because the uh, crown chakra Sahasrara is the space where we incorporate the most stillness and quiet. So there aren't many asana that I want to dive into for that uh, section. But for the other two, I'm going to show you some examples of yin asana that might um, benefit uh, the throat and then the third eye. And then we'll also get into which oils I use um, but you know, this is all up for uh, discussion and I would love to hear from you if you have tried using essential oils in your own classes, maybe around the theme of the chakras or maybe something else, um, and how you use the oils in your practices. Um, I'd be very curious to know because we're all on this learning journey together. Okay, so we're going to start with the throat where we left off from. So for the throat chakra, I'll first kind of dive into the oils that I would use. Now the throat chakra of is uh, the space of communication, the space of truth speaking and the space of purity. So oils that help with respiration, um, are great to use for this space. So I've blended um, a chakra spray that incorporates tea tree oil and eucalyptus oil for this area. So the reason I've chosen those is because the eucalyptus is very clean and light. You might often find that um, oil used in a steam room or a spa environment because it can help to kind of open up the air passages. Um, it's also a, a great inflammation um, oil for uh, calming the sinuses. And it can promote feelings of inner freedom and expansiveness. If we feel overwhelmed or restricted by our environment, this would be a good oil to uh, incorporate. I often have um, a bunch of dried eucalyptus hanging from the shower head. So when the the shower room is steamy, it kind of gives off that lovely scent. So um, I encourage you to use that if it um, sounds appealing. And then the tea tree oil has this fresh medicinal scent to it. And it's been used for thousands of years to treat uh, bacterial and viral infections. It's also a really strong antiseptic 
Um, so it has those immune building properties uh, within it. So those are the oils I would use. And in, in the past classes, I've talked about how I would use those and obviously getting permission to use those from your students and being very transparent about what's in them and how you're going to be using them is important. So please refer back for those notes. In terms of asana, yin asana specifically, there are a few that come to mind for me. So the first one was really just to kind of create some mobilization and lubrication around the neck and shoulders. If we're feeling tight or restricted uh, in this area, it might not be so balanced. So a couple of lovely neck and shoulder pieces that I like to do. Um, first of all, I love to just start with bowing the chin towards the chest, encouraging a few breaths into the back of the neck. I might then roll the right ear to the right shoulder, maybe rest the left fingers down to the floor, breathing into the side of the neck. I might take this hand that's on the floor and place it behind the back and slide it up the back and then turn and point the chin down towards the shoulder to change the sensation in the neck, maybe getting a little bit further into the back spaces of the neck can feel good. And then bringing the chin back to the chest and repeating that to the other side, extending your arm down and, and moving the hand around a little bit on the floor till you feel that there is enough sensation there. And sliding the back of that hand up the spine and gently turning the chin to point down at the shoulder to encourage a new stretch into the neck. coming back to center and then bringing the head back to center. Another one I love to do for head is to place the hands behind the head. Some people can interlace their hands, they're great. Some people will rest their fingers a little close to their ears. And then just encouraging people to lift their chin and chest towards the sky, moving the shoulders down their back, widening the elbows so that they can breathe into the front spaces of their chest, their throat. So there we are coming back to center. Another wonderful pose for the throat would be fish pose, which I'm going to show you on the mat. And um, this pose is a upper back bend. So it isn't for everybody's back and neck. So there is an option to do fish pose with the support of props too, which I'll also show you. So first option for fish pose is lying directly on your back, placing your hands behind your pelvis and making a, a triangle shape with your hands, so thumbs and index fingers connected underneath the pelvis, right on the sacrum. Gluing the legs together, pointing the toes and then nuzzling the forearms a little close to the sides of your waist. Now press down into those forearms and hands and start to lift your chest to the sky and let the crown of your head settle to the floor. You're looking to the back of the room. As you can see, this is quite intense for the neck, the chest, the upper back and the shoulders. So this is why it's not for everybody. This is just one option. If this isn't for you, and this wouldn't make a good yin shape to hold for any amount of time, a nice option is to create a similar shape using your bolster and a block. So you place the block on the floor behind you, you put the bolster on top, you've got this nice diagonal line there. Keep your pelvis on the floor, lowering your back and the back of your head to the bolster, lengthening the legs, pointing the toes, arms down by your sides, or forearms just propping on the floor. And this could be your version of fish pose. Or you might open your arms wide so you get a little bit more of that space across chest, 
and collarbones. Another great shape for throat chakra would be the Gruta Karani because you're going to be adding a little bit of a compression into the front of the throat and a little bit of extra space perhaps in the back of the neck. So for that one, the Gruta Karani, which is also known as legs up, legs up the wall, I'm going to demonstrate it in the middle of the room because often we don't have enough wall space for all our students or we're just not set up in the studio at the wall, so it can be a bit disruptive to move all your students to a wall in the middle of a yin class. So instead, I, I love to use a prop under the pelvis for this. So you have your feet on the floor, knees bent. You'll push down into your feet, lift your pelvis up, and then you'll slide your bolster underneath your pelvis. You can also choose another prop that's maybe not so high or not so uh, firm. Your hands can be on the floor and then your knees come into your chest. The middle of your back sinks to the floor. The back of the pelvis tilts up to the sky and then you'll start to float your legs towards the ceiling. You might wiggle your toes and roll your ankles. Some people like to also float their arms up rolling the wrists, wiggling the fingers. And here you're in your Vipruta Karani. Legs up. A little constriction, a little constriction to the front of the throat, not much. The shape is also really rejuvenating and uh, restorative. Super soothing on your nervous system. Another place to go from here would be knee to chest pose. You can also do this without props under the pelvis as well. If you're doing it from the fruit karani, you would keep your right knee to your chest, hands are around your right shin or right hamstring, left foot is flexed, core is turned on, and you're going to start to lower your left heel all the way forwards and down to the mat taking your time with this until the heel touches the floor or if that feels too much you can always add a bit more bend through that left knee and then breath into the front of your left hip flexor into your lower belly and again you're focusing on a little hug of your chin towards your chest as if you're just gently holding a grapefruit there you'd repeat that to the other side left knee to chest right leg to the sky slowly lowering the right heel down and then spending lots of breath on this side i really love to give like a good three to five minutes in these poses so that people can really provide space into the hip flexors into the psoas and then the knees can come back in you can lower your hands you can put one foot down at a time on the floor to complete the Purita Karani. To come out, you would press down into your feet, you'd lift your pelvis, you'd remove your prop, and then you would roll all the way down to your back. There are many other shapes you could do to simulate the throat chakra. A great one is being in sphinx pose, which is when you're on your front body and your forearms are to the floor. And instead of keeping your head directly straight in front of you, to actually close your jaw, not clench, just close the teeth together, and then lift the chin towards the sky is gonna to help to stimulate your thyroid and stretch the front of the throat. That can feel really good. Okay, I'm going to move on because time just flies with this. Um, so we're going to now transition up to the third eye, the third eye space, Ajna. It's directly between the eyebrows and it is a space of clear seeing. It's our clairvoyance. It can help us to see clearer, not only our inner, but also our outer worlds. So it can be super powerful and it's a great space to connect with when we are in our meditation practice. For the third eye chakra, I like to think about oil, essential oils that are stimulating for the mind. So the two oils that I've blended together for my chakra spray for this third eye is uh, peppermint oil and geranium. 
And the reason I've chosen those is as follows. You might associate peppermint oil as being very cooling and refreshing. It's also a stimulant, so it can help with alertness and promoting energy. And it can be used to alleviate headaches. You might have um, seen peppermint roll-ons that you can put on your temples or into your hairline that have peppermint oil in and have been said to help with alleviating tightness or tension from headaches and migraines. And finally, these, uh, the peppermint oil, because of its coolness and its um, light energy, it can be very stimulating in uh, our creative processes, it can help to keep us awake, alert and focused. And then the geranium is a lovely um, partner to the peppermint because it is rosy and it has a very sweet aroma. Um, with these little like herbaceous notes to it. So even though it's floral, it's still a little bit earthy. Um, geranium is a stimulant for the circulation in the brain. And it's been known to be used to enhance blood flow through the body. So within the brain, it's useful for the pineal and pituitary glands to help bring more balance, perspective, and clearer seeing. So that is why I've used the oil geranium. You might also associate geranium oil being used in the sacral chakra for menstruation. Um, so if you are focusing on sacral, geranium might crop up as a good oil to use in that space too. But for the third eye, those are the oils I would use and I have them in a roll-on form. So you can roll on the temples or around the hairline or in the hairline or back of the neck is really nice. Please always be mindful with a roll-on with peppermint oil in that it could definitely aggravate the eyes if it gets too close. So that's why I say kind of stay nearer the hairline rather than bringing the oil too close to the eyes or too close to the eyes across the forehead because it could seep in and be very uncomfortable. So just be aware of that. I also have it in a mist form too, so it can be sprayed overhead or again, back of the neck and shoulders is really nice especially in the summer months, it can be very cooling. Um, but again, just try and avoid spraying directly over the face or near the eyes, even though it's for this space. So for the third eye chakra, I already mentioned we would be looking at um, meditation practices. So tons of options for meditation practice in a yin practice, you can come into meditation from a specific pose if you like, or you could choose to do meditation from Sukhasana, a seated shape, or from a reclined shape, maybe just with the knees bent and the feet to the floor so there's still some engagement, there's still some activation. You're not lying your students down in Shavasana, it's a different practice. So meditation would be a great place to tap into the third eye, especially meditations where you are um, moving, you through, moving your students through a visualization, a guided visualization that can be really powerful for the third eye. Um, viewing the inner landscape, bringing in opportunities for the students to, to get creative with that. I also like to play with visualizing a color at the third eye and then maybe molding that color into a specific shape or texture or tone. I find that's a really great way to bring attention to visualization in the third eye, but also to stimulate creative flow. Another great way to stimulate the third eye in a yin practice would be in child's pose. 
um, but offering your students a chance to massage the front of the brain, the, the forehead across the floor. A lot of people get tension and tightness headaches in the front of the head here. So rolling the forehead across the floor can be a really nice option. I'm just gonna show you what that looks like and for students who maybe can't put their forehead to the floor as well. So you're in child's pose. For those students whose forehead will touch the floor, then you can just invite them to roll the forehead right and left as many times as feels good for them, or just simply letting the front of the forehead rest to the floor is enough. If you have students whose foreheads do not touch the floor, they could stack as many blocks as they need under their forehead so that it will touch something. So here I've stacked two blocks and I'm keeping my forearms a bit closer. And again, you can still get the sensation because your forehead is in contact with something that's applying pressure to the forehead and then hopefully a sense of release. So those would be things I would look at um, in a yin practice for the third eye. Also any poses where your head, shoulders and chest are expanding. So shapes we've looked at before like reclined butterfly pose or fish pose where the front body is nice and open can help to stimulate and activate that space. Um, reclined supine twists can also offer that expansion and sense of release. Shapes where you are starting to kind of really slow down the practice. So lots of restorative shapes that you hold for time where you, your body is actually in a more passive, relaxed position rather than big, deep stretches or sensations can be good because it will shift the attention from the physical body and back into the uh, inner world and, and maybe to this landscape at the third eye. For the crown chakra, Sahasrara, this is located at the top of the head and this is our space for wisdom and inner knowing and trusting ourselves and our gut and um, it's a space for our self-realization, it's a space of unity, uh, connection to, to the greater good. And so for, for this space, I've blended um, some very grounded, um, but kind of luxurious oils, um, because this kind of feels like the peak, the, the, the end, end place of our chakra journey. Um, and it's the crown, it's got this kind of regal, all-powerful, all-knowing quality to it. So the blend for this chakra is frankincense and sandalwood. The reason I've chosen these oils is because sandalwood is very deep and woody and it has these little floral, soft, sweet accents. So you're getting that earthy grounding like we would want from being down in the root chakra, but you're also getting that kind of light ethereal scent too. Sandalwood is, has been used to help with aiding in quietening the mind and to allow spaciousness and peace to arise. So you might know, Tiss, that sandalwood is used a lot in um, incense and uh, soaps and products that, that you would, lotions that you would put on your skin. So it can be very nice to use um, at the end of the day as you prepare for bed, for sleep. And then frankincense is used as a partner to this because again, it is sweet and woody. So you're getting that balance of 
rooting and lightness. And it's considered a holy oil. So frankincense is used for meditative contemplation and for attaining tranquil states of mind. On a physical level, frankincense may help with soothing the nervous system. And I have to say frankincense has become a real staple for me. Um, it's really good for uh, vata types like myself. So if you follow Ayurveda, um, vata types are a little more flighty and airy and dry and can be a little more anxious. Um, so I find the frankincense because it's kind of got this, this heavy weight to it, um, but also sweet and it's kind of, it's got, it's like a cozy little hug <laughs> I find, and it really feels like a treat. It does feel luxurious. So I love to put a few drops in a bath or in a body oil, or I love to burn candles with frankincense in, um, especially in the, in the cooler months, you know, the fall and the winter, just, it really feels like a hug. So that's the blend I would use for the crown. And for the crown, you honestly are trying to create space, time and quiet for the body, mind and breath to simply be. So the best pose for the crown is Shavasana. Shavasana set up in a way that your students feel comfortable, grounded, held, cozy, and they can allow for things to be received, to drop in, and for things to be emitted, to be let go. And the only way that can happen is if we feel safe and we feel grounded and we feel supported. And um, so once you've kind of got through the practice, you've moved and shifted, then allow for that space and time in Shavasana to be the practice for the crown chakra. You could do some restorative asana in uh, a crown chakra practice, of course, because they too are inviting rest into the body, stillness into the body. You're not asking the physical body to do too much. So blending some restorative poses for the crown chakra would, would work. And also continuing on a, a meditation practice would work, but not so much a guided meditation practice, more, you know, setting up a meditation, but then letting the students have time and space and quiet in that practice so they can be with themselves. And that concludes our little chakra <laughs> chakra journey this time around. I love um, working with the chakras. I love learning about the, those energy centers and I love bringing in little tools of wellness that can support us on our journey of, of healing and getting to know ourselves and connection and deepening a practice. So if you have experience of the chakras yourself, you, you know, maybe you have had an experience connecting to specific chakras that you want to share. Maybe you have taught about the chakras in your yin practices, then please share what poses you've used. If you have been using aromatherapy in your practices and you have some tips, tools and advice, then please, please contribute to the conversation and let's continue to learn together. If you have any questions about what I've discussed today or in the other parts to this, then obviously please reach out. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have any requests for future student development classes, anything you're really interested in learning more about, then please let myself know or, or share on the Facebook group. We would love to, to know how we can support you further in your learning. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you again soon. Bye.